had it later and you'd have been in here and your tail had been wagging outside. <laughs> Hold it. Don't you hide that in the kitchen. You just put it down somewhere till later. What's the matter? What's the matter? I'll, I'll tell. I'll tell. <laughs> There's a storm coming up. You better latch the uh, door of the chicken coop. Chicken coop? And next time, finish your supper at the table. <laughs> Don't we had fish for dinner. <laughs> You go on upstairs and close the windows and tell Mr. Richardson to close his. Yes, ma'am. And Billy, Bobby, see that the porch swing is covered and that the rockers are protected, huh? Then everybody report back to the lobby for pot detail. <laughs> There's always been another leak around here somewhere. <laughs> Next time, ask somebody. <laughs> Mr. Richardson? Fine. Guess thought I'd sit down here in the lobby for a while read uh, my magazine. Oh, don't sit there, Mr. Richardson. Oh. No. <laughs> Couch is comfortable. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, it's quite a storm. It's real Chester Farnsworth weather. Chester Farnsworth weather? Yeah, you see, he... uh, I don't think that Mr. Richardson would be interested in that story, Uncle Joe. <laughs> would you, Mr. Richardson? Uh, no, I don't think I'd be interested, Mr. Carson. <laughs> How do you know when you ain't even heard the story? He, he came down here to read his magazine. Huh? You won't read no stories in that magazine half as exciting as The Curse of Chester Farnsworth. The Curse of Chester Farnsworth? All right, you got him hooked. Tell him the story. Well, you see... Just a lot of plain foolishness. You see... I don't even know why you're taking his time. Katie, you gonna let me tell this story, or ain't you? Well, I guess I won't be able to stop you. What's the matter? Uncle Joe's gonna tell the Chester Farnsworth story. It's about that time of year again. It was just about this time of year, over 50 years ago, on just such a night as this, with a lightning, a lightning... Thunder was a thunder. You're sure getting sensational cooperation. The rain was a pouring, and upstairs in room four, the very same room you're in. A dapper young drummer, who was the greatest towel snatcher of his time, was packing his satchel. The Cincinnati Inn, and in mint condition. Clyde City YMCA. Beautiful. Martha Washington House. <laughs> and they said it couldn't be done. <laughs> now, one more towel to add to my collection. Shady Rest Hotel. There's not another drummer in the country that can match my collection of towels. <laughs> and sometime that night, after he'd packed the shady rest towel with the rest of his ill-gotten loot, Chester Farnsworth came down those stairs, went out that door, into the storm, and was never seen alive again. What was that? Ghost of Chester W. Farthington. Farnsworth. Farnsworth. You sure blew that one. You girls can laugh at the story if you want to, but it wasn't funny to old Chester. Now, what happened to him? 
Uh, uh, Mr. Richardson, wouldn't you like some pine coffee? I'm not through yet, Kate. You are, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Why don't you want me to tell this story? Because it's a lot of nonsense. I suppose it was a lot of nonsense when his ghost was seen wandering around the halls of the Clyde City YMCA trying to get back into his old room. His ghost? He was trying to return a towel he took. You see, Chester was condemned to wander the face of the earth returning the towels he took before his spirit could apply for admission to that great sales room in the sky. <laughs> Them towels have been turning up regular through the years. And I figure pretty soon the shady rest is due for a visit from old Chester. That's a very fascinating story. Well, I'll see you in the morning. Uh, good night. Uncle Joe, what are you trying to do? Give the shady rest the reputation of being haunted? Oh, I didn't bother him none. It bothered me. I'm not going to sleep a wink tonight. Count sheep. Or <laughs> towels. <laughs> How much to owe you? Same as always, three dollars. I've been thinking of raising the rates, but then the guests would probably expect fancier cooking. And a younger <laughs> bellboy. Uh, would you mind taking Mr. Uh, Richardson's uh, suitcase down the train? Oh, no, 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 I'll take it. Well, he doesn't seem to want me to take my bag. Behave yourself. <laughs> now put that down, it belongs to Mr. Richardson. Any way to spell Richardson. Mr. Richardson. Uh, Mrs. Bradley, I can explain. Yeah, I'll bet you can. What else you got stashed in there? Uncle Joe. It's a good thing I trained that dog in towel retrieving, or I guess it'd be drying on old newspapers. <laughs> Mrs. Bradley, uh, you've known me for years, haven't you? Well, yes, I have, and that's why I can't understand you doing a thing like this. Well, I can't understand it either. A few minutes ago, when I was packing, I got this strange urge to take that towel. It's just like somebody was making me do it. Chester Farnsworth, the last of the great towel snatchers. <laughs> He's come back. Well, if he has, he better register. I'm terribly sorry. Oh, that's all right, Mr. Richardson. At one time or another, all of us get the urge to do something we shouldn't. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, bye, bye. Uncle Joe? We are going to have to have a little talk. Chester wants his key. <laughs> Thank you. 
Chester. Uncle Joe. Relax. I was only asking about that chest of drawers I was supposed to paint. Don't <laughs> mention a chest of nothing. That's an unmentionable word around here. But now, I... look, for the first time in months, we're expecting a full house. And I don't want you entertaining our guests with any of your made up spooky stories. Kate. I'm I... warning you. Hi, Kate. Hi, Charlie. Hi, Kate. What's the matter with Floyd? He's afraid to come in. Why? He's as scared of Chester Farnsworth. <laughs> Who told him? Don't look at me. If you come outside, I'll be glad to tell you about it. You come on in here, Floyd. There's nothing to be afraid of. I don't suppose he'd be around in the broad of daylight. Nor in the dark of night, either. But Mr. Richardson told me... Richardson. Yeah, he was really shook up when he got on the train. He was pale as a ghost. Floyd, you come back in here. Now, fellas, all this talk about... Where are your passengers? We ain't got none. But I was expecting six salesmen to come in with you on this run. They ain't coming. Why not? Well, they ran into that Mr. Richardson in Pixley. I see. And they told me to tell you that they're sorry, but they're going to skip the Shady Rest this trip. Fine. They might make it next trip if Chester Farnsworth ain't still moaning around. <laughs> Uncle Joe, I hope you're satisfied. By the time Richardson gets through with that story, there won't be a salesman in the county who'll spend the night here, including Chester. <laughs> I dug this out of the attic so as we can settle Chester once and for all. Now, <coughs> this is the register that you claim covers the period that Chester stayed here. He did. Show me. But the... If his name is in there, I'll apologize. And if it isn't, well, you're leaving anyway. <coughs> Kate, you wouldn't really. Show me. awful lot of names in here. Well, wouldn't it be the same month as this, Uncle Joe? Yeah, I guess so. Mom! It, 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 it's him. He yeah, had room four. I told you. Look at the date he registered. In another week, it'll be old Chester's anniversary. Of what? Of the last mortal towel he ever swiped. He's probably been hanging around waiting to land or return it. So as the curse will be off, and they'll let him in the big sales room in the sky with a clear conscience. Mom, can things like that really? Well, I, I, I. Well, there's got to be an explanation. Like what? The hotel settling. Sure, that's what it is. Ain't it, Chester? That's nothing to be afraid of. That's Uncle Joe Garglin. <sighs> What's Uncle Joe doing gargling at this time of night? <laughs>
What's the matter? Uncle Joe, were you gargling? Gargling? What would I be gargling for this time of night? <laughs> Possible, is it, Doc? Not scientifically, no. But then there are a lot of things that science can't explain. Oh, I've seen some mighty weird things in my time. Yeah. What are you looking for? Tranquilizer to relax you. They keep sending me samples of these new wonder drugs. You wonder if they're any better than aspirin. <laughs> you aren't bothered with paraclinium orias, are you? No, just with Chester Farnsworth. Now, Doc, what am I going to do? Intended for chronic plasticemia. That's a new one on me. You know, you miss one episode of those doctor shows, you don't know what's going on in the medical world. I, I didn't come for pills. I came for advice. Frankly, Kate, I don't know what to advise you. In all the years that I've been practicing... Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Dex Melman. I told you, I don't need any medicine. No, no. Dex's a fellow I went to medical school with. Always interested in psychic phenomena. And you know, the weird and the unexplained... You gotta see his wife. She's a weird one he's never been able to explain. <laughs> Doc. Oh, but seriously, Kate, he's a psychiatrist. He's written several articles on the subject. Why don't I get in touch with him? He lives upstate. Maybe he'd be interested in meeting Chester. That's the original towel rack, Mrs. Bradley? The same one, Dr. Melman. We'd better leave Mr. Farnsworth room to return his towel. Dex, you don't really think that he might... Of course he might. He's getting tired of wandering around dragging an old towel through the hereafter. Uncle Joe, why don't you let Dr. Melman handle this? He's the expert. Fine expert killing a million-dollar business. Uncle Joe wanted to sell tickets for Chester's homecoming. I asked you to come here. I just wanted to make Kate feel better. But now that you're here, I don't know what to believe. But I've investigated many of these uh, occurrences for a long while now. And I don't know what to believe myself. You mean to say you think there's a possibility that tomorrow morning we might find an old towel hanging in that rack? All I can tell you is I investigated a case in Canada where years ago a ghost had been seen in the library of the Kenniston Mansion, apparently searching for a copy of, of an old book of love poems which he had written. And one night, the book disappeared, and the ghost was never seen again. Then, if there's a towel there tomorrow morning, we're rid of Chester? That's a fair assumption. Oh, the happiest moment of my life will be when I can broadcast the fact that Chester's left the Shady Rest for good, and we're open for human business. <laughs> Chester Farnsworth weather. What's that? <laughs> Don't leave that bone on the rug for Chester to trip over. <laughs> Chester, an anniversary cake. Maybe we still got time. When will he be here? We don't want to miss him. You girls are going up to your room and locking your doors until morning. Oh, oh Mom. Mom! And I'm doing the same thing. <laughs> How about you, Uncle Joe? Oh, I think I'll... Go ahead, Joe. I at least ought to get to say good night to him. We'll tell him what room you're in. <laughs> good night. Mom. What do we do? Sit and wait. Aren't you scared? No. How come? Don't they send you samples of tranquilizers? <laughs>
there was the towel on the rack. And Chester snuck in and put it back? That's what Dr. Melman said. Well, if that don't be the note in the milk bottle. Well, what does that mean? I just say them. I don't explain them. <laughs> Did you see the towel yourself, Betty Jo? Yes, and I've never seen one like it before. Mom said it was the kind of towel they used in the hotel long before she was born. Well, I'll be doggone. What does that mean? <laughs> Mom said to be sure to spread the word around Pixley that the hotel's been de-haunted. Well, don't worry. We will, just as soon as we take Doc Stewart and Doc Melman back to Hooterville. I don't know how to thank you, Dr. Melman, for coming here to help us get rid of Chester. I really didn't do anything. Except for and Kate's only chance to become a rich widow. <laughs> I've got something for you. I want you to have Chester's towel as a memento of last night. Well, thank you. As a matter of fact, I have another memento of last night. Uh, Dex had a camera with infrared film in it hidden in the room. He did? I developed it early this morning. You mean you actually got a picture of Chester? <laughs> <laughs> now I know how Mr. Richardson felt when he got caught with a towel in his valise. <laughs> well, Mrs. Bradley? Well, Dr. Melman, I waited till nearly 5 o'clock this morning for Chester to do his dirty work. And when he didn't show up, I sneaked into the room with my pass key and helped him out. <laughs> you see, I had to get rid of Chester so his folks wouldn't be afraid to stay here. I understand. I don't think Chester will bother you again. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. And, and thank you, too, Doc. My pleasure. Uh, tell me, Kate, where'd you get that old towel? I found it up in the attic when I went looking for the old register. That's the last one in existence. Or... <laughs> and forget about Chester forever. All right, girls, we'll start with the bed, then the dusting, and then... Oh, I thought you were going to give that towel to Dr. Milman. I did. Where did that one come from? Chester must have taken two. I guess so. Hi, Chester Farnsworth. Wherever you are. This has been a Filmways presentation.